Hello crafters, uh, today I want to make a sympathy card for a colleague of mine whose mother died and um, normally I have a lot of ideas when it comes to my cards I start with a set of dies and embossing folders and I build up as I go the, 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 this, this is what works for me so what I'm going to start with is um, the Holiday Angel by Spellbinders um, is S3209 this one the next one is A2 Bracket Borders 1 and uh, the item number is S5181 this is it the next one is Spellbinders and this is called Grateful Lattice the item number is S5164 and as embossing folder I chose uh, by creative expressions the Art Deco Fanfare this is the one and the item number is EF018 um, I was looking more for dice that have a little bit of a cathedral or religious look because it's a sympathy card and I think this embossing folder very well represents the cathedral um, shape. Um, of course, the the angel represents it to be. Even though it's a holiday angel, it can also be used for um, for a sympathy card. So this is what I'm be I'll be starting with. But as I said, I like to build up as I go. I get more ideas as I go. I also want to use um, a ribbon and. This is the ribbon I'm going to use in my card. My card is going to be white, black, and red. These are the colors I want to use for my card. Um, I was thinking just to, to only use red and uh, white, but I was afraid it's going to have too much of a holiday look. So by including black, it will also have that uh, you know uh, sympathy look to it. So let's get crafting. From your uh, Spellbinders H of Breaking Borders 1, um, I picked, let's turn it around, so the first one and then a cutting border. As you can see the first three, the thick ones, that are, they're actually, they're like a stamp in the paper, so if you want to cut a piece out, you have to use one of the other brackets that have a continuous line, which actually is a cutting border. So. I chose the first one in the pack and then the one before last as a cutting border. I put them together on a piece of paper which is uh, two and a half inches by six. And as you can see, I cut together and this piece down here already um, fell out after cutting. What I want to do next is to impose this. However, I don't want the embossing to appear on the part that I cut. I, only the, I want the embossing to appear only from from the cutting part up. So at this point I'm going to take my embossing folder and open it up and I'm going to feel which part is most raised and in this case, in my case, is this one. This one feels a little bit flatter and this one feels more raised. So this is the part I'm going to use for embossing. Make sure when you place your piece just make sure that this piece actually stays here without moving so I'm going to add a little bit more of low tech, low tech tape which is actually painter's paint uh, uh, painter's tape, sorry I'm going to put this but the dies, the cutting part of the dies has to be up otherwise it's going to, if you put it like this the dice will actually cut into your fo embossing folder and it's going to ruin it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it like this. I will not close the folder. The folder stays open and I'm going to, this is the first time I'm trying this, I'm going to use the same um, uh, sandwich for the grand caliber that you normally use for embossing dice. And let's see if this works. So I have my pink plate. I'm placing the folder in here. Okay. I'll take my 
on that. Just make it, I want to make sure that it hasn't moved. No piece has moved. Okay. And the gray plate. Take the gray caliper. And let's see if it works. First time I'm trying. I have a feeling it's too thick, but we shall see. Yes, it is too thick. Okay, no problem. Let's not panic. Let's try with the raspberry plate. So I'm going to remove the gray plate and I'm going to place the raspberry plate instead. So what I have now is the pink plate, the embossing folder, the rubber mat and the raspberry plate. And good luck. <clears throat> Let's see. Yep, it feels like this is going to work. That's what, yep, it feels thick enough. I think the impulse in two places, no problem. Let's see. Let's see the results. Drum rolls and fingers crossed. Yes and no. Okay, no problem. I'm not sure if the gray plate it's actually it might be thicker than the really the really gray plate. Oh I gotta try and misplace my things. Let's see if the gray plate is thicker. No, we feel like kind of the same the same height. Alright, no baby. Um but what's thicker is the white plate. So let's try that sandwich. So I have the white plate. I have the embossing folder and the guy. This might the one upstairs very excited the SpongeBob is on. Uh, the rubber mat, the raspberry plate. Quite thick, so let's see if it's going to work. Sometimes I like to try things as I go. Like I may design a card or think about design and then change my mind as I go. This is kind of how I create my cards. All right. Yep. Looks like it's going to fine. And we should do it. This is where the time, yeah, I think this worked. I felt a little bit of resistance where the dye was. So let's see. Drum rolls. Let's see what we've got. And I think it worked. Yes, it did. Yippee. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful, beautiful embossing. I said the light was not so powerful, but I need both light. So what I used was the white plate, open embossing folder, rubber mat, of course the the piece of paper with the dye in it, rubber mat and raspberry plate. So let's see now the results. absolutely perfect so I have embossed as you can see the upper part is embossed as I want it but the part where the die cut is it actually is just the embossing from the die itself so we got exactly what I wanted now I'm going to make a quick note of this uh, sandwich with the embossing folder and die so I don't forget about it next time the next thing I would like to do is to create another piece like this, only that I don't want this uh, lattice design anymore, all I want is just the cut down here. And so therefore to be a little bit longer with just with this uh, bracket cut. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the piece that I have already cut and embossed on top of the paper that I want to do the backing with. I'm going to pick the second, the 
the same die that I used before to cut the other piece, the bottom piece of it. So before I used this die paired with this die. So I'm just going to take this die. to place it underneath if I wanted to have like a very very small um, border I would place it right against the white uh, piece of paper but I want a little bit to show so at this point I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit just a little bit and I'm going to release this one and where am I this is I'm going to place this keep it in place and I'm going to run it through my um, die cutting machine so I finished cutting the piece of paper the black piece of paper and if we are to put it like this I got exactly what I wanted the same shape with a little bit of a border as you can see spread just to show a little bit of the button. From the Grateful Lestis, I want you to cut two pieces using this die, which I have already done so here. This one and this one. When you cut a die, um, the piece uh, will, will have this portions here that are not cut out so those you'll have to cut by hand just like I did it on this piece um, I'm not sure right now if this will be relevant in what we are doing but just for future reference if you ever want to use this piece as a full background this is how you can go about it by cutting these sides um, so I have my crafting knife ready uh, I have a problem, I cannot cast away for the life of me so therefore I'm going to use the ruler to help me so what I'm going to do I'm going to place, place the ruler and cut from this edge so I will cut from this edge to this edge for each piece this is a very heavy car stock so although it's a very good crafting knife I have to go over a few times and even then I didn't really go to the ends there we go so you have to do this for all the sides the exception will be here in these two corners where you can see you don't you have to cut like this and like this and goes for here and here but like after you embossed the die you can already see how much you have to cut because you go around the embossing part so I'm going to do that now with you and then I'll go offline and finish cutting the rest of the of the pieces so we don't take too long with this video so like I said, the embossing part helps me to know exactly where to stop from cutting. I think I need to change the blade to this knife. It's been overly abused. This is how we cut this uh, corner out. So I'm going to go now offline and cut the rest of the pieces, including this corner. And see you guys soon. After cutting two, the two pieces of lettuce, what I would like to do next is to overlap, but not like this, like perfect overlap. I'm going to leave this one as it is and turn this one around and play a little bit with the design something like this and then overlap and uh, cut um, a 2 by 6 inches and I really hope I have the same yes I do never measured it before 
cut a piece at uh, 2 by 6 inches so I'm going to do that offline I'm going to use my um, uh, glue and um, just you know quickly go around the lattice and once I'm done gluing the pieces together in the design that I want I'm going to cut it at uh, 2 by 6 inches so I'll see you right back once I glue the pieces together and I cut my uh, piece so I have cut the uh, <coughs> after gluing the two pieces together of the lattice I've cut my piece I wanted which was um, 2 by 6 and I'm going to use as a backing a piece of black cardstock at 2 by 6 so in the end our piece is going to look like this <coughs> um, like I was saying earlier um, I build my cards as I go so I already see this card something like this so this will be the bottom piece this will be the middle piece and from another piece of course I get two and a half by six I just embossed it using our embossing folder which is going to stay here so at this point I'm going to introduce red which is the angel which I have already cut in red but I want to have as a backing a uh, white piece of cardstock because as you can see on white it looks great so what I'm going to do and this is what I'm introducing in the piece I'm going to use the um, grand um, ovals, grand decorative ovals and the item number of this one from Spellbinder is LF016 I'm going to use the small, smallest piece because I still want to have this piece here where I'm going to put a, something like saying with sympathy so this I'm going to cut a piece of white star with this time and the angel is going to sit here and will overlap a little bit the die but still line the die to be uh, visible at this point I'm not even sure whether or not I'm going to use the ribbon so like I said I build as I go I have ideas I give up on some ideas for others and so on and so forth so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to cut my uh, over piece so in the end I've decided I'm still going to use ribbon uh, what I want to do I'm not gonna use the full angel I'm gonna I'm, I'm going to put ribbon all the way around and then the angel in the middle and then grab the angel down here um, I've seen this, the way I'm going to play the ribbon, I've seen this somewhere on YouTube, I cannot remember whose video it was, um, otherwise I'll have given the link at the bottom, so I hope I remember this um, technique correctly. So take a piece of ribbon, I haven't cut it off the spool, but I pulled a long long string as you can see and I, I bend somewhere in the middle the pieces together what I'm going to do I'm gonna put the left part over the right part like this and now I'm going to make a loop from of my right hand put it through this loop and try to make it the same width as the, as the ribbon itself now with my left I'm going to make a loop and put it through the already through the loop and pull down on this one to make it the same width as the, as the ribbon itself and I'm going to continue on doing that until I get the, until I get the piece braided that goes all the way around this oval shape so I'm going to continue like this and of course I'm going to finish this offline so we don't take too much time with this video so 
so I'm taking a loop put it through the already formed loop it's kind of tough to work with my hands up in the air and tighten it down to the width of the of the ribbon As you can see it's forming this really nice braided look and um, because this is a, a double sided driven so on one side it has design on the other is just red it created it creates this really nice red border on the side and you will see the design of the ribbon in the middle all of that it looks really nice when it's um, plain color ribbon so the ribbon will have the same design or the same color on both sides but I love the way it turned out to be so I'm going I'm going to go offline and continue braiding this until I get a long enough to go all the way around my oval okay so <clears throat> I'm at the end of my braiding this is my uh, this is my ribbon my braided ribbon so in order to close this I'm gonna use the loose end of the ribbon instead of making a loop now I'm using the loose end to feed it through the loop sorry So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to make a, I'm going to now cut the ribbon of course, make a knot and hide it underneath, use some glue to keep the knot in place, a very loose knot, okay let's do that now, <coughs> because over here they will overlap a little bit when I make my oval, but I'm going to close with a very small um, um, bow to make it look nice. So now I'm going to cut the two pieces okay. and uh, make, a sm uh, make a very loose knot. You're hearing my dog upstairs shaking. <laughs> not which uh, will be hidden under the ribbon when it's time to um, glue it on my oval shape and then here I'm gonna make a tiny bow that's gonna sit on top that will look like the closure of the of the oval After braiding my ribbon, uh, and when I turn it around, on the other side you have the full, um, um, the part of the design of the ribbon. So either way, if you want to use the ribbon with the full design, on the other side you have the full design. I still like this part better. I like the fact that. Uh, you only have the design of the ribbon in the middle so I'm still going to use this side but just wanted to, to show you that um, I have already glued my uh, angel and uh, cut it down here at the bottom and, and now I'm going to use hot glue in order to glue the, the braggy ribbon all the way around my uh, uh, my oval so I have my uh, glue gun ready my half glue gun ready. I'm going to glue the end bits of the ribbon on the back. 
and in order not to burn my fingers I like to use this wooden piece to press down to glue our ribbon on our uh, oval shape I have to glue a little bit at a time Okay, pretty did more than necessary, but it's okay because I'm gonna overlap the ribbon. I'm going to make a nice ribbon which I'm going to place here 
with the pretty ribbon ended. So next step, I want to attach the sentiment to the card to create a sentiment. Um, I just went on Google Images and I googled with sympathy and I found this really nice design which I'm going to use. Uh, I will uh, use Ming foil, red Ming foil. So I printed it out and now what I'm going to use, the dice I'm going to use next to create the sympathy, I want to do something with a nice aperture. Um, so I'm going to use um, Spellbinders Elegant Ovals and the Spellbinders item number is S4425 and from this set I want to use the, let's see, it's the second one from the inside, the second one. And from the regular Spellbinders ovals, uh, one is the small ovals, the other one is the bigger ovals. When you combine them together, they give you the nice uh, one eighth of an inch border. So from here, I'm going to use, this is from the small ovals, I'm going to use the, the third, no, one, two, three, four, the fourth one from inside. I'm going to put it down so I can pick it up, this one. And uh, from the bigger ovals, um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to use this one. Yes, this one. So I'm going to go ahead. So I'm going to put these dice on the side. These are the dice I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and use Ming Foil for my... Uh, uh, first, I'm going to actually cut the sentiment and then I'm going to use Ming Foil. So in order to cut the sentiment, I'm going to use from the big ovals. So this is the one, two, three, the fourth one up. I'm going to cut it like this. Then I'm going to put it in uh, my uh, mink foil machine to use with red mink foil. And the aperture, I'm going to use this die and this die, which will sit on top this one okay so I'm going to do this now and then I'll be back to show you how to make the aperture just wanted to give you a small tip here when you are cutting a piece which afterwards will go through the Ming machine with Ming foil and you place the die on the paper and then you use low tack uh, tape Always make sure that the tape will not touch the piece that will get cut and will go through the Ming foil machine because sometimes it is like glue residue behind it and then of course the Ming foil is going to attach to it. So at this point I will make sure that my tape is on the die and on the outside so therefore it's not on the piece that or on the shape that will be cut out of this die. Also another tip, uh, prior to uh, putting your piece through the Ming foil machine, sometimes what happens, uh, even from your fingers, you know, oils and stuff you, that is not visible, will be imprinted in, in the piece of paper and sometimes the Ming foil actually attaches to that as well. So prior to putting my piece in, I always like to put a little bit of baby powder, it's too much now just dip my finger in it and just around the piece don't do it on the on the writing that the info is supposed to attach to because then it's not going to attach so just around the, my piece of uh, paper to make sure that actually the mean foil will only stick to the writing part almost like when you prepare your uh, paper for uh, to use with uh, embossing powders the same trick applies here as well. Alright, so next I want to cut our aperture. So using the oval from the big ovals, same same oval shape that the uh, same die that I cut my uh, my uh, sentiment with, I'm going I'm going to use it once to cut an aperture with from the smaller ovals the one two third one in and of course the aperture that will be visible it will be cut with the die from uh, the elegant ovals and the same oval inside I'll explain to you why I want two apertures 
Okay, so I have my two apertures done. Um, I chose to um, uh, do the intricate one with red to, to match the angel. So this would be the visible aperture. The reason why, I, okay, um, so once again, this one is cut from the same die that I cut my sentiment. And the one, two, the third die in from the smaller oval. So this aperture was created like this, like this, and like this. The next aperture was created using the uh, elegant ovals and is the third die in this and uh, the same inside aperture that I used for this one and we got this shape. The reason why I wanted two apertures is because I want to use foam pads so that to create a 3D effect on my sentiment. The problem with that is the fact that this aperture has uh, this intricate design around it and so therefore there's no room for um, foam pads and if anything that would be visible. So I will use this aperture to glue this together flat and then this aperture is going to help me to put foam pads and then glue it down on this one and to have a nice 3D look. So I, I have already applied my uh, foam pads on the back of the aperture. I uh, put uh, two rows of foam pads in order to make it a more of a 3D effect. What I like to do once I, um, uh, before I glue it down to the piece I need to, is to use a, like a drop of glossy essence on each foam pad square. This will give you a little bit of wiggle room to move your piece around if it's not properly um, glued uh, in place. And also, the foam pads, I notice they don't have the strongest glue in the world, so this will ensure that your piece will be glued down permanently, and it will not fall in time, or there will be no bad surprises at the end of your project. So now I'm ready to glue my aperture onto my sentiment. to move a little bit because of the glossy accent, it's normal. And there we have it. So now we have a nice aperture on our sentiment. And we have that 3D effect that we wanted. Okay, next, now that we have uh, all the pieces together, I want to um, create a background for behind these pieces. So I took a piece of white cardstock and I'm not sure yet what size it's going to be so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a dry run with my pieces the way I want them to look on the um, on my uh, background I'm gonna put them down and that will tell me what size car stock to cut. So I'm going to arrange them a little bit. Right. I want a little bit of space here, probably like a quarter of an inch between the pieces. Okay. So now using my pencil, so I see I have a little bit of space here, which I would like a little bit of space here. And then just like here, a tiny border, I'm going to mark it here as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this with my uh, paper cutter. So first I'm going to cut this piece, putting my uh, pencil sign exactly in the groove of the cutter. And now Next cut is the second sign. Again, I'm going to put it in the groove of my paper cutter. Okay. Now let's see what size we have in the end. So it's going to be six and one eighth by seven and one, two, three, four, five eighths. 
Now I would like to emboss this background and I'm going to use the same uh, embossing folder that I use for my main background. This. And then I'm going to glue my pieces on this background uh, using uh, foam pads to give it a little bit of a 3D look. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Um, another thing that I like to do when working with uh, large embossed uh, pieces of paper um, somehow, I don't know why, no matter how um, thick the cardstock is, this is a very thick cardstock, it's 120 pounds weight still like after I emboss it, see like it's not straight and that gets to me uh, and that actually even shows when you put it on your, uh, like see here, the way it's like a bit bent same happens for the bigger pieces, they tend to bend on the sides, look it's curved a little bit same with the sides, the lower sides so what I like to do for those pieces where I can is to cut another piece of paper uh, which is one eighth smaller than my original piece uh, so if this piece was um, uh, two and a half by six um, this piece would be uh, five and seven eighths by two and three eighths and just add it as a backing and that will help it will make your piece stand straight um, so I have already cut my pieces I I just use like um, one eighth of an inch score tape which I'm going to um, um, now remove and stick it on the back of my uh, pieces. Okay, so at this point I think I have all my pieces together. Um, I um, now created the base of the card with a hinge. Um, let me show you how I did that. So as you can see, I like to create my cards from inside out. Um, so the base would be the last uh, uh, that I create. So I took this background and uh, we know that uh, this background uh, measures um, what? Right now. Six and one eight by um, seven and Oh wait, seven and one, two, three, four, five eighths. So I want it for the next for the base of the card to be half an inch longer. So therefore, these two pieces would measure um, six and five eighths by eight and one eight. Let's double check that. Yes, yeah, six and five eighths by eight and one eight. Correct. The hinge measures the same width as my um, uh, base, which is six and five eighths, and uh, it's uh, by two inches. I scored it in the middle, and now I'm, I applied score tape, and now I'm going to glue the bases, the two pieces of card here together. So let's do that. And every time. I work on something, my desk becomes more and more of a mess and my working space gets smaller and smaller. On each side I use half, um, half an inch, an eighth and then a quarter of an inch tape. But you have to leave a little bit of space between the scoring line and the next uh, tape down. So let's try and uh, put this together. <coughs> this is always very challenging. And it must be perfect from the beginning. This is it, and put it down. Okay. Next, you gotta do the other side. Okay. Make sure. 
sure you have no tape overhang so whatever you have tape overhang just bend it over on top of the glue this time just to ensure that my two pieces are all be equal I'm gonna start from the base up Try to be as straight as possible. It's not easy, especially when your fingers will go down to the base. And of course, my pieces are not straight. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Please, please, please. Okay, that's alright. No biggie. Happens. again so make sure that everything is straight to the bottom on the sides before you lay the place down hold it with your hand in place make sure it doesn't move this is what happened the last time with me it moved and now go down and now it should be fine yes it is Whew. it's always such a challenge for me I don't know why Don't worry about this piece to be covered, so just making sure this is glued down properly, which is now. Okay, so now we have the base of the card, we have our uh, uh, background, I put the foam tape on the back. We have the next background, again I put foam tape, foam, foam on the, on all of the pieces so it's going to be good like that quarter of an inch space between the pieces and then another quarter of an inch between spaces okay and this is the piece that we have already created which will be glued here like this it's gonna be glued flat because now the card is already raised and I said that I was gonna make a bow to put here but when I'm creating the bow, the bow is gotta getting lost in the design, uh, so uh, I decided to leave no bow, uh, to put no bow. And anyway, this piece is interlocked so well together, it's not even visible. But what I did, I used the bow for my uh, sentiment, which is going to sit here. Um, at this point, though, I've also created pieces for the inside the card, and these are one eighth of an inch smaller. Than the, the base of the card. So if our base was six and five eighths by eight and one eighth, our two pieces for inside the card is going to be six and a half by eight. And they will sit inside like this. Like this and like this. When I was putting my pieces together um, just as a dry run it feels to me that all these squares, like, it gives it a little bit of a rough look. So, in order to soften the look a little bit, I want to um, actually round the corners. And I'm going to use, uh, by Wear Memory Keepers, this uh, Crocodile Corner Chomper. Uh, I'm going to use the quarter of an inch uh, rounding. So we are at a quarter of an inch, perfect. I'm gonna put it in here and chop. And I'm going to do the same with the pieces that will be inside the card. You might hear my daughter singing upstairs. So the pieces that will go inside the card, I'm also going to do the corners. <coughs> Sorry about my uh, 
raspy voice we've all been down with really cold in the family um, and the piece inside this is the sentiment the message from my family to my colleague um, basically uh, from the internet I took this uh, picture here and of course I use um, red mink foil uh, and pass it through the uh, Ming machine. Um, this is what I love about having the Ming machine actually. I think it saves me a lot of money on um, stamps because on the internet there are so many beautiful messages and images, you name it, that uh, at this point I actually stop buying stamps because I can find whatever I want on, on the internet, just do uh, Google images and choose the picture that you like. Uh, paste it in a word document, adjust it as you need to, print it out and then pass it through the meme machine and I don't even think there is a stamp with this message so I think this is great so now we are going to put uh, all our pieces uh, together so this is our card I made a note so this will be on top and this at the bottom Let's remove and we clean up a little bit here. <coughs> and there's the other thing, when you impose some background, it's so tough to remove that score tape afterwards. She barks at every noise. It's alright, it will stay there. Okay, so now, yes, Sasha, we know somebody is outside passing by. She's a very good guard, though, I guess. <laughs> One down. Throw this in the garbage. Press it down a little bit. And then the sentiment will sit here. The message will sit nicely here. I'm not going to use foam pads. I'm just going to lay flat because if you use foam pads inside the card, then the card will be a little bit raised. There is a way to do it. With, um, a double score on your hinge if you want to use a uh, foam pad inside your car so like this when you close the car it will actually lay flat but this card I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible I and mean, it's, um, it's a sympathy card so I didn't want to go too crazy with embellishments and flowers and bows and etc like I normally go with my cards just wanted to keep it simple but also nice okay hard so we don't uh, let them know the embossing. That's another thing, when you work with white everything shows, everything. So my note will stay here inside the message so I'm going to use some double sided tape to clean it down. Yeah, I printed it on the wrong side that's okay at this point it will not be visible so it's absolutely no problem there 
nice and flat because we're going to glue it on uh, in both backgrounds so to be a little bit uh, tougher than usual because in both background doesn't allow a proper gluing of flat pieces on it so I prefer to use extra tape uh, is my okay Remove all these pieces. Come on. See, even now, like, see, but the weight of the font is going to keep it down. Let's press down a little bit more here. And now we are ready to put our um, pieces together. <coughs> you about foam pads that the strength of the glue is not up to my standards um, normally when I put the uh, foam pads on the piece I need to use them on I, uh, I use like uh, one eighth of an inch uh, score tape first and then I put the foam pad over okay Sasha there's no one at the door please ignore her She's still a puppy, she still has to learn the difference between If somebody stays outside for too long, she feels immediately and she starts barking She's just happy thinking you're gonna have visitors sure it's on the right side, yes it is. Okay. Not too hard, so you don't squash the foam pads underneath. I think I have to upset and do some damage control. So the next piece is going to be this one. frustrated that she got inside for no reason. Probably the people left already and she's thinking but why would am I having visitors? I love to play with people.
can wait until she gets a little bit more mature. I doubt that will ever happen. She's a lovely dog. Oh, she wants to play all day long. She's got more energy than my daughter. Quarter of an inch, no, approximately a quarter of an inch distance between um, the pieces. Okay, I think I'm good. <gasps> sorry, 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 I grew this wrong. It's a good thing. Sometimes this screw doesn't work. This is supposed to be on the upper side. No biggie. That's why it's good to have some with glue on it. Now you saw the benefits. Not only that in the end once it's dry it's gonna glue on properly but if you do mistakes you can remove it with no damages to your card. Okay, this piece is up here. Okay, and now the final piece. This is the middle piece which will go there. I'm not too worried because this piece will cover the glue. It's almost mm. finished. Come on, I know you have more in there. As you can see, this is our pieces. And I think I grew this one the wrong way because I wanted these arches to be the other way. This piece, please. That's the problem when you do a video and the card in the same tone. But again, the wet glue helped, saved my butt. Otherwise, I would have had to do the piece all over again. I wanted the arches to be like this. Just about checking out. The arches are up here, yes. Great, now it's perfect. our background to which I'm going to attach this flat and uh, also flat our sim um, sentiment yes. I don't want this to stick out too much but I don't want to take it away from the design of the bottom either And I have to be careful when I have the glue on this, not to glue on this side. So I'm gonna put this side down. This is the part that I need glue on. So I'm gonna add glue like somewhere to here. I'm gonna use a wet and score tape. So this will delimit. Of the 
to glue my base. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep my finger here to feel where the where the glue is ending. This is how I know how much I uh, uh, glue so the um, the glue is not visible. Let's put this piece back here because it's according to this piece. Then I'll to glue this one. between the score tape and the um, glossy accents once the glossy accents dries off I know it's a perfect uh, it will stay there forever and now for this piece I'm gonna use again some score tape I'm gonna be, have to be very gentle because of the uh, my god I don't wanna break I'm going to be very gentle because of the foam pads I already have and I don't want to squash them down. And once again the reason why I'm using also wet glue is because um, I'm putting this on a already embossed background and sometimes the score tape doesn't like that and you can your piece can become unglued. The other thing I forgot to tell you, um, the message inside, um, I um, I cut it using from the uh, Grand Decorative Ovals 1 and the Spellbinder site number for this one is LF016. Um, I used the um, used the second die in um, counting from the middle the second die in so not the smallest one the next one up so this is the die I used to cut the message that I used inside the card and um, this is our card um, our sympathy card um, I'm going to uh, put down all the dice I have used for this card so I'm going to um, it's pretty flat so because it doesn't have too many embellishments so at this point I'm not sure maybe I'll make an envelope or I'll maybe I'll make a box but uh, I will definitely share a picture of the finished uh, product including the box or the envelope I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use so this is how our card looks like I said I wanted to keep it simple but sophisticated and this is inside the card thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day bye bye